Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues A to Z in which we're playing as a Chichen Itza, a nation I have not played in a very, very long time on this channel, but oil and that their beautiful imperialism. Many years ago, during the height of the resource wars, Americans, God bless them, invaded Mexico, which is scared rapidly depleting sources of oil. Their invasion and occupation left a lasting scar upon the land in more ways than one, and arrived alive in an ancient culture. With the eradication or desertion of the American military, a void has been left in society. As a result, we turn to those ways of old to try and fill this gap. Red, white, and blue. Uh, Americans were once our ally. They became then our rival then. Then our enemy in 2051. The American army invaded Mexico with the intent of securing our oil and protecting their businesses. Whilst the Mexican forces put up a stiff resistance, they were ultimately dashed by the superior quality and quantity of the American troops. The American troops were then free to occupy the entirety of Mexico. When the American troops came down to the Yucatan Peninsula, our militias initially resisted, but the Americans came back with an overwhelming force. Was it well, well, red was the blood of the martyrs. Oh boy. Uh, blue was the water that we fled into. White was the flag we flew in desperation. Um, it seems like that would probably be a better one to do, but we're going to go with red. Now, I have played this nation before, like I said, and I did the intellectuals with Tijun Clara Guzman, so we're not going to go with that one. We might go with the people, we might go with the Ejercito, we'll see. Ruling the waves. The islands of the Caribbean is numerous, and the islands themselves are fertile and defensible. It's therefore of the utmost importance that we have the strongest navy around so we can may seize and safeguard the wealth for ourselves. Wow, it's nuclear attack fire. <clears throat> The subsequent collapse of the civilization, stripped in the following decades of blunder and ignorance, stripped for the new world of, of most of its knowledge of the old, some scraps of the old world values have now been clung to. Still, of course. These values often convey through folk stories have become important to the growing middle and upper classes of the empire, who seek to link any old world they can. Two popular stories that pass around most, and with our help, one can become a paramount in our society, which should it be. A story about the sanctity of family, the infallibility of a ruler. Ooh, I like this one. This makes more sense to do. Well, let's go with this one. Come at the hour, come at the man. The day was dark, and the Aztecs were on the advance, and the bulk of Ejercito were in, in broken retreat from the Aztec forces. However, a young and charismatic general emerged and rallied the few troops he could into battle once more. Through a combination of surprise, brilliant technical decisions, and sheer desperation, the Ejercito troops shattered the Aztec vanguard, the fleet, long a part of the Itzen history. The Great Gulf Fleet was that the Itzen Empire can field in times of war something of legend. Drawn out from merchant boats as well as regular military craft, our fleet rules the Western Gulf pretty much as supreme. Opinions divide, however, about how we should best employ the unique advantage. One uh, young admiral, Admirante Camilla, argues that we should focus our naval prowess on contesting the rivers of Mexico. Amaranta Mateo, meanwhile, is a firm believer in the white patrol formations, helping protect trade and enhance her reputation. Finally, the other Admirante Luis backs the force in a big approach. Uh, appro supporting the use of large ships to protect her superiority far and wide, what plan does Calomte favor the most? Community plan? Disperse formations. Uh, is this a naval doctrine thing? I think it is. Capital ship doctrine, river fleet, dis dispersed formations. I really don't like this one. I did this one before. And it just helps your screening ships, for the most part. It does give you a little bit for capital ships, but really the capital ships are where it's at, in my opinion. So, just. So, you definitely want to go capital ship doctrine. This is the last time I remembered. Capital ships. Then we'll expand the factories. Cut up to these adventures. Under Calumte Sebastian, the Itzen Empire has drastically expanded in size in most of the campaigns of the Calumte's leadership. The Calumte has led the Itzen forces himself. He has no intention of giving this up. The Calumte arises. On the 12th of March, 2232, the Calumte, Calumte Sebastian II, first made his name. There, on the banks of the Papaloapan River, the young Sebastian rallied the rest of the remnants of the Itzen army to him, holding off wave after wave of Itzlan forces or infantry. The Atsalan force, barely a fraction of the Atsalan horde, that day forced the Atsalan to a bloody stalemate following the collapse of the Atsalan's northern excursion into Lalok's lands. Ultimately forces an Atsalan retreat. It was on that day uh, uh, that the Kalumt became revered among the Ezushito, Ezushito and among the people. But a few years later, Sebastian seized power almost bloodlessly in a coup. With the support of the almost entire armed forces, he proclaimed himself the Kalumt, or King of All Kings. All who met him agreed he had one quality that made him a great king, but what was it? Tactics and split second choices made filling all? As charisma for us enough to rally the flagging troops, flagging troops. Uh, do we have any descent? We have like no descent here, so keen focus on, su on supply left us lasting impression, which I kind of prefer that one. But call to personality, because why not? His adventures, naval speed. Uh, we have completed the beginning scavenging program. Southward expansion. <coughs> Expand the factories. Or in larger forces. Well, let's do this one. Expand the factories. Factories are our life left from the flow guns. From them flows guns, explosives, and ammo, all of which are required in abundance to defend our borders and continue conquests. 
So we have several of this stuff here. So the Flower Wars for many decades. A board clash is between ourselves and Nuevo Atlan. The clash revolved around three main stages or states: Mexico City, Hela Ush Ben Soun, and La Tomba Compartita. Owning these states gives us important stability bonuses and also gives our enemy important debuffs. The board is contested every three or four months or so. With initiatives flipping backwards and forwards between ourselves and Nuevo Atlan, we fail to ignite a border wars or uh, hardliners demand and will face harsh consequences. Cool. The two fronts, but let's go into this one first, real quick. You two are okay. You are all garbage. Eh, not really garbage, garbage, but not really great. Okay. Um, yeah, not bad. Uh, just for extra test, nice. Oh, following the hit victory in the banks of the Palapolan River, Sebastian became a popular hero. Major Sito followed him devotedly, and the militias bowed before his might, three years after his victory against the Atslan. In 2242, Sebastian seized power in a coup d'etat. The taker was executed, executed without so much as a whisper from society. Sebastian was crowned Columbt, the King of Kings, by the priest and the temples. Other temples. After taking power, Sebastian set out to destroy army corruption and most importantly, recovering territory lost to Itza in four years prior. His campaigns rolled back the Atslan Empire, expelled southern raiders into the deepest jungles alongside the militias of Honduras, and destroyed the northern tribes, now in the year 2275. The Columbt is about to embark on new expeditions, but where should be prioritized? The west? That's the north of the graves, sir. Or infrastructure. We always build more infrastructure. Let's have an arms workshop. You never have enough in the beginning, right? Oh, this is also what's also set up before us, too, so. Um, we can have one of those if we really want. I don't care. That's fine. Uh, we love political power, though. Uh, let's grab more political power. Plus point one is not bad. I like that. It hurts our population, though. Ooh, more political power. It's not Purge Clara. Well, not yet, at least. Political power is not Purge Clara. Well, let's keep it for now. More intellectual support for now. Oh. Hmm. Not bad, but I don't want more political, more intellectual support right now. What do we have? Moderate exemptions. We're funding the army. Just mentioned war for refined warfare. Military theorists. Interesting. Oh, look at that lazy lady lasers. Penta arms. That's very nice, actually. You call cartel. Industries, I butchered that. Cartel rejects. Huh. But I have offloaders. Cost the card of pharmaceuticals. Ooh. So it's a fortification detachment. Vice royalty branch offices, which is actually really nice. Tohono advisory firms. But Chico Reserve. Entertainment. Still five percent. But I'll take the entertainment. Peninsula Roads. Uh yeah, this for 180 days. Well, I don't get some goods that we lose. Do we get anything out of it though? Peninsula roads. When it comes to the coastal travel, boats are all the best call. However, naval travel is dangerous and unpredictable. The counter this, we should expand on road co connecting coastal sentiments, allowing coastal communities to safely trade. I think it's the energy program. Um, it's an empire's vast. We govern over close to a million people. Small by pre-war standards, but huge in this post-apocalyptic world. As a result, our farmers must toil hard in their fields to feed the cities and the army. If there's too few of them, or if their mother nature just so wishes, we face a devastating famine and even a severe uh, uh, civil unrest. The success of our day of Ka'an depends on how expansive our rural draft exemptions are, as well as your day of Ka'an predictions coming from our priests and ultimately on the Mai's goddess Hun Naya Yi herself. Her only prediction is uh, good. Countdown. Near the end, the fields are gradually drawing to a close, and soon it'll be time to bring in the crops. Let's hope we reap a good crop. When we, the predictions for next year's uh, harvest will increase. Predictions? Doesn't mean it's anything better, though. I don't want to lose any more stability for now, so. Angel, yes. How much do we get a day? 1.57. That's actually really nice. Well, since we've known here, expand the Mero de Dores. Get start working on that army XP. Peninsula Roads. Southward expansion. Or we do this one first. Yeah, let's get the city and arms. Placing new factories in our heartlands is a great boom. They'll be able to produce munitions for our armies, even if the worst shall come, and we shall lose most of our empire, though that day will never come. Southward expansion. With the door claiming more and more of our lands as well as people, it would do as well to find souls and new allies. So the south lies the nation of Honduras, led by the Commandant Luis, and guarding our southern frontier. With some coercion and help, they might be willing to join a cause. We should prioritize our diplomatic efforts with them at once. Absolutely. Mm, show them where I'll put. Be inspirational. I just always like going inspirational, it's just easy to do. Everyone's going to be inspirational. 
You will be inspirational. You will inspire people under you. And above you. And under you. And in you. That's right. Uh, I'm just... Oh, we're on asymmetric warfare. Uh, we could... We're using a lot of just infantry. I just hate asymmetric warfare. I really do. We don't have law keepers. I hate militia. Just in my opinion, they're not worth it. More HP is nice, more breaking defense, but still. Let me know in the comments. Do you ever guys use militia at all? Because I generally don't. Soft attack is nice and all, but I'm probably just going to go with conventional warfare. Yeah, I'm probably just going to do that instead. Does it make any sense? Probably not for what we're doing, but whatever. Peninsula factories. Integrated military economy? Uh, it's not terrible. And uh, map the Gulf. They had to roll the waves of the Mexican stretch of the Gulf of Mexico, as well as a sizable chunk in the Caribbean. When navigating and mapping the remainder of the Gulf, we should be able to expand our naval power across the entire region. Nice. And large forces. Many thousands of men under our command. But a border stretches for many thousands of meters, and expanding, expanding with each new conquest. New regiments are required to fight on the front, so to protect the heartland. heartland. Naval reform. At the moment, our navy is heavily decentralized. Focus around small raiding parties and a larger main fleet. We should strive to integrate the fleets together around a central command structure to allow the strategic control of the Gulf. And the regiment, the Ejercito. The Ejercito are elite forces. They consist of recruits from urban areas and are regularly drilled and well-equipped, however. The size of each group varies according to volunteer willingness. Oh, crap, I should have read that one. My bad. Um, and local populations. I'll read the next one if I remember. We should strive to standardize the Ejercito entirely, creating a few new divisions in the process. My bad, I didn't mean it. And it uh, like I said, it comes back every year. That was so nice. Drills, don't, need to, don't care about that one. Um, not sure where this is going to happen. I really want to use these guys for it, so we'll see. These guys are decent. 12 combo, which is okay. And recon, but we do have 10 combo here too, which is okay. View, view, view. So we can't edit the divisions, which really sucks. And that really freaking sucks. Compromiser. Division attack and defense. Who deal with these support? Experience soldiers' losses goes down. That's pretty nice, too. Earth Child. Speaker of the Council. Like I said, I don't want that one, but still. Secret Police. Get from above, over the centuries. The weather has changed drastically. The radiation storms and droughts have ravaged the wasteland. As seasons change in Mexico, our people, and especially our farmers, <clears throat> once more pray for rain and prosperity for our crops. Let's pray all this year is plentiful. A dry wasteland once more. Martin Arabal. It's only 5%, which isn't really worth very much. Uh, infrastructure, or we lose war support, or lose, I don't want to lose any population, but you get more factory output. Uh, 5%. So if instead of 0.1, we did this one, we got technically more than 0.1. So. Hey, look at that. <coughs> Just have to get plenty of guns for now, it's fine. <coughs> and large raiding parties. Our naval operations allow us to raid settlements. Uh, up and down the Gulf Coast, oh. and into the Caribbean, for their riches. The method has allowed our capital to itch in itself. To drastically grow in population and decadence. Surely more men dedicated to this duty can't have a downside. Movements on the border, apart from, uh, from the front of the warring tail. Enemy troops are located at the border of Hela Ochunbensu. It's far too close to our borders to be just routine training exercises, and our treacherous neighbors must be prepared for an attack. Go, 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 go. Attack must be imminent. Increase fire. My skirmishes on the board have recently begun escalating a small scale combat. A border war seems to break right out on the border of the Nova at sign at any moment. A new foe. Up in the north, past our borders, something is in afoot. Industry is churning and resources are being stripped of in, from the landscape. Who or what is doing what this, we do not know, but we must find out. Yes, we must. Victor in the border, with the merry moods and hardened hearts, the rivets and words return with the conquest of Hela Uch Ben Tsun. This conquest was not without loss. It brought great gain and everlasting struggle with our eternal rivals. Nice. Uh, what are you guys at? 12 combat width or 3 con? It's not bad. 
There we go. Hey, arm XP a little more political power. That's pretty nice. New foe. We're like doing a well equipped army anyways, just keep pushing through this a little faster. Um Okay, do it anyways. I'm about to do it. I do want to max out PP. Because we love PP here. The red blood. Subit. The stimulus. Oh, yeah, we do have these guys too. A new poem. And. Ah. Capital. Excellent. Not a great division, but it'll work for now. Uh, technology rate. The lines are another full of two things, hostile armies and technological riches. Using our tried and tested naval raiding techniques, as well as some central planning, we should be able to effectively liberate some of this technology and bring it back home for our own use. Nice. A lot of time. Let's still get that done. There you go. Crusher's army. Good. Three days left. And, <clears throat> happy September. Northern Reconnaissance Mission. After the conquest of the Northern Tribes, the Northern Frontier, were went more or less quiet. However, reports of unusual signs have recently started coming to the Steel Belt, or Steel City. Reports have come flooding in ever more frequently by the week. We should send an elite detachment of the Azure Sea to investigate while it's past the Northern border and put down any threat there might be. Wish him well. Dave Kahn. Seems just like a blink of an eye since the last day of Kahn, but yet another just passed. And so time to reap what we have sown here is once again. Up and down the Empire, passing the toll in the fields and bringing the years across for its balls. Our administrators expect that we get our cut of the crop before the week is out so we can feed our uh, armies in the cities. Time to sow the winter seeds. Next year looks good so far so for now. So he's fire on the board for now, which is fine too. Raiding the army of Mexico. Clashes with the Atlan. Since the first encounters with the Atlan, we've been inspiring with them on the border. The process becomes something of a ritual. Each side throws men at each other until forces are backed down by sheer losses. Maybe this time will have a breakthrough. Support the southern front. Sending mass amounts of guns and ammo <clears throat> to the southern guerreros will increase their opinion of us, of course. The fact that they have them join our war is, of course, a coincidence. And if that doesn't make them willing to give them some territorial claims, then what's the harm? Facing ghosts, the fifth recon Ejercito has returned from his expedition north, t telling tales of ghostly shapes harassing them during the day and strange sounds following them at night. However, the group couldn't find a cause for the strange occurrences, and after several days of hunting, returned to Steel City. The only sense of life, the group, recon group recovers a handful of weapons by an unknown manufacturer. Where that, why they are laying about to the north of the settlements, we don't really know. But it probably can't hurt us, right? Right. Right. Yeah, not bad. Organization relations don't really care. Not bad, looking pretty nice. You could damn peninsular. Rats, we don't like rats. Right in the Army of Mexico. The Army of Mexico lies over north, occupy much of the coastline as well as the Soto La Marina River. Their large water frontage makes them very easy to raid. The Army of Mexico simply can't cover all the shorefront. As well, we should conduct a large-scale raid on the shoreline, stealing what we can. Which target shall we focus on? Storage facilities, military factories, schematic storages. Ooh, what kind of want to see this one? Map the Gulf. Well, I read that one earlier. Uh, new designs, refitting, pre-war craft, and <clears throat> manufacturing simple seagoing craft uh, has been enough to secure naval dominance for now. But we can't rely on these methods forever. We must create new, innovative designs to ensure that we continue to rule the waves. Uh, new designs, yeah. New Gulf Fleet. While the Island uh, Fleet may rule the waves of the Southern Gulf, we do not know about the other naval powers of the continent to be able to confidently declare victory. Our fleet must be invincible. Raiders return to the north. Look at this. 
The Northern Raid was a resounding success. A brave Mero de Adores, after an escort from the Gulf Fleet, made lamp on the army of Mexico's completely unguarded coastline. They rapidly overwhelmed. They rapidly overwhelmed the small local militia before crushing the garrison of a target, a reasonably large industrial complex. Once inside, our troops gathered, ra- grabbed what they could, and burned down the rest before returning to the land, cr- land craft and leaving as smoothly as it came. A resounding success. This, this is a work of progress to the Gulf of Mexico update. Oh. Has no effect. Bypass automatically. Lands of the Caribbean uh, <clears throat> are close placely together, allowing us to easily evade one island from the last. Base is here. To extend our naval dominance in the Caribbean. We need a network of naval bases across the area. They must be secured one way or the other. And colonies here. While naval bases are well and good, the, to exploit the reaches of the Caribbean for years, we must continue, or sure, continue to access the local resources. Cultural ties with the Tzotzil. And there it is, the fallout, when our nation was just getting to its feet, a small group of early its citizens dissatisfied with. The Colombs split from our nation. They traveled south through the jungle, eventually established themselves in the deep jungle, deep in the jungle, barging Tierra de los Tzotzil in the process. As a result, we may share cultural ties with the Tzotzil, which are practically begging to be exploited. The challenge for leadership. After years of careful political marriages and clever resource investments, we managed to elevate a loyalist to a senior position in Tzotzil. All he needs to do now is successfully challenge Tzotzil leader to a duel and Tzotzil will be a loyal puppet. Ray survives another day. Earlier today, at our instruction, Maximo Vela challenged Tierra de los Tzotzil's ruler, Tobias Ray, to a duel for leadership. These duels are traditionally assigned on the leadership of Tzotzil and are seen as an honorable way to settle disputes, but have rarely been used over the past uh, decades due to Ray's fearsome reputation inside the arena. However, at the prompting of the Colombs himself, Vela set aside tri- for the title in the arena. Despite his best efforts, Vela was unable to break Ray's careful defense, and ultimately a well-planned thrust from Ray knocked Vela to the ground floor, unfortunately. This completely sinks our plans to peacefully annex to itself, but we do have other methods at our disposal. If you want the job done, right, do it yourself. Integrated military economy. Now that the lands of Honduras are under our control, of course, we should strive to tightly integrate their factories into our own production systems, and encourage, finally, civilian commerce. A strong coastal trade makes our empire powerful by encouraging civilians to trade goods and set up their own businesses. We can ensure goods are widely available around the empire, assisting future construction and trade. So if we have to do go to war, that's not bad for us. Um, how do we want to do it? The mess that is down here. We want the special forces, of course, to lead. Um, there's a lot right there. Maybe we just have a thrust from here to there. Uh, you guys are right there anyway, so you can go right there. Should be okay. Cool. Still building up some civvies. But any guns and whatnot, though. Anything important here? Inspirational. Mystery Stranger. Yeah. Not good. I mean, not bad. Not, not bad. Moving to the border. Oh, crap. Oh, well. Mexico City. To arms in the Well, you know what? Fine. Good. God dang it. Y'all get your butts up here. Go, 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 go. And they're going pretty fast, god dang it. Oh my god, they're going so fast. Cool. And then about 13 days, we should uh, get enough organization by then, I hope, at least. Some of them are training, so it should be okay, yeah. Uh, let's see, anything else? Propaganda efforts, organization relations, drastic measures, 70 days for that. Yeah, we should be pretty good. Let's take a look see how the uh, tension on the board is going to result in, though. What, three days left? Not bad. Oh. And it's going to screw up everything here. Scammer just found something nice. Can we win? Oh, it's getting a little dicey here, but we do need to throw in the three more special forces, so. We might lose it. I don't know. Dockside trade. Our control of the seas may means that our coastal trade flourishes. Our citizens are more than happy taking to the seas to trade goods, and so markets thrive in the docks with boats bringing goods from up and down the empire. More. Oh, he's sick. Oh, that sucks. Well, got another guy here. Tom- Tomas Gomez. Oh, they're trying. They're trying real hard. Ooh. Ooh, organized military. Nice. I don't want to get the one that always gives us more political power. That's the one I always like getting to. Where is that one? Right there. I like that one a lot. Victory back on the border. Yes. Absolutely. No. 
There you go, another drug abuser. And what's next? Army. I like this one. But, uh, hmm. Pueblo Herbes? Eh, might as well, why not? The dark side trade. I don't know where were these guys. Uh, unreasonable demands. And then um, expand the metal de Doros. The metal de Doros are small marine units under the separate command from the rest of the army. This makes it perfect for small scale invasions of river seas, so they should be expanded upon. Should be able to easily get over here. And then once these guys uh, dock and fine, see, I'll get over there too. We can just help ex expand. Capital Hill's gone. Nice, very nice, very nice. Very good, very good, very good. You might as well start attacking then. Nice. Come on, get your butts over here. I don't want us to get in circle now. Days of waves. To the other shores of it's are thronged with crowds keen to watch the day of seafaring racing that marks the day of waves. Instituted by the Colomb to bolster its long naval uh, long naval tradition, the holiday has become a national fair with prospect of racers keen to improve their sea legs and get the attention of the keen eyed admiralty. We're taking the to watching the day's events with interest. New XP power, political power. Well, I prefer the political power. Never a pirate. Um, I'm not sure who we want. Caravan trader? More caps? Uh, I'll go with that one. Why not? Because <coughs> we can. Oh, good and Gulf fleet. While well, it's some fleet may uh, rule the waves of the southern Gulf, we do not know about the other naval powers of the continent to be able to confidently declare victory. Our fleet must be invincible. It's good for our XP though. Very good port. There you go. It's a little bit of a grind, but that's alright. Woodworking, not bad. I'll put, and eh, it's all ahead of time. So I don't want you to be able to break through here. Do you have any air bases? Yeah, we do. But we don't have the range for them. Oh boy. Not good. I wish we could actually edit these divisions. Catastrophe. The Columbus has been badly injured. At the moment, details are sparse. All we know is that Columbus was hit at a medium range while inspecting troops on his northern border dusk. The bullet appears to have entered his spine and punctured a lung. The Columbus swiftly fell unconscious, but is clinging to his life for the moment. His dreams were surely shattered by a bullet in the dark. Rumors, rulers come and go, but will our kingdom fall apart? Dark times ahead. Oh. Not good. Hey, finally we're getting there. Slowly making our way there. You guys are actually what? Are you guys decent? Eh. They're all the same. That's dumb. Things start falling apart. Just over a week now, it's passed since Columbus attempted assassination. We still don't know the identity of the attackers, nor do we know when or where the Columbus will uh, recover. One thing has become clear, however, just how much the country relied on such authority to just keep running. The Columbus left no, no clear success to his rule. And local governors have used the chaos to exercise more and more autonomy from the orders issued to the capital. Over our borders, vultures are also circling. The Asylum are eagerly eyeing out their borders, and to the north, the frequently the frequency of the odd occurrences of the 5th Recon Group tried to identify is increasingly drastically. At home, the situation is just as bad. Orders are going unfollowed, the army is falling apart, and the systems are aligned in the streets, things are getting bad. Oh. Sooner or later, the political chaos will calm down, so when a power struggle will emerge. Oh. Oh. If you worry about that, please go ahead. Oh. The game is on. With the Columbus illness stretching on for weeks now, it's become clear that successors are needed. Two outfalls outshine the rest, uh, to hold Clara and the Ejercito's command, Carlos. Only one can grasp the reins of the country. The game is on. This 
Gonna hamper our war efforts. Yeah, yeah. At least you can reach him a little bit over here. God dang it. Good grind, though. As everything's falling apart. Oh, you actually broke over the river, huh? Well, that took forever, but you got it. Ball rejected. Yay! You can just force it. Want the goddamn capital now. Infrastructure standardization. Oh, that's what I do. There you go. That's good. I'm trying to get down here is going to be like impossible. How much more manpower do these guys have? 3 to 5, my god. They're out of infantry equipment, so they should be not able to support their attacks as much, but still. That's a big butt, though. So eight divisions are my goodness. Oh my god, are you done yet, Dunyer? Jesus Christ. There's literally only one. There go the rapids. End of the Flower Wars. Following the outbreak of civil war for the control of the Esalen Empire, the importance of the minor skirmishes commonly dealt with the Flower Wars has faded in the eyes of the people on both sides of the border. Instead, the two powerful factions of the Esalen Empire at each other's throats, and rumor has it that its son, a war council, being begging Columbus Sebastian II for intervention. It seems, unless it's our placate, the Flower Wars might turn into a very real war. A tale as old as time, which with, ends with less than a whimper. Remove the Flower Wars and everything like that. Oh, we lost a lot of the power there. Crap, power's in the air. Country's falling apart. And the Columbus is not here to save us this time, however. Two people. <clears throat> Soon to be too busy to dwell on this. Uh, Halak, Unik, Carlos Franco, and Tejon, Clara Guzman, and instead they are making moves behind the closed doors, counting their allies and negotiating for support amongst the rest, and for the stakes they've never been higher. The Council of Elders has been called together for that the request of the Tejon to decide on a successor to Colombt. The Council is expected to choose Clara as the next leader of the Itza. Indeed, she was confident enough to call for the Council, however, the Halak, Unik, and uh, Gem Gran Generalissimo of the Ejercito, Carlos Franco, is determined to not go down without a fight. For Clara's victory would almost certainly spell the end of the Ejercito as they now exist. <clears throat> the next few months will not will not be uneventful. Only Carlos and Ejercito can help us. Help us remove help Carlos rise to power. Round events will try to impede our progress. Should he not win, we continue as a result in faction. So the great game is on, and the power's in the air. The Council of Elders has been called by the Tehuan Clar and the top item on the agenda is a concession of the Kalont. It's highly totally anticipated that the Tahun herself will win the struggle, but the Ejercito recognizes that this will mean the end of their organization as they know it, and will do everything they can to prevent this outcome. The mood of the elders is re represented by party popularity. The faction with the largest influence of the council mates will be designated as regent and heir apparent. Following the Columbus injury, the council of the elders will be convinced, or convened, to determine who his regent and successor would be. We must do everything we can to ensure we are selected as this candidate. Was Carlos going to command the support of the Ejercito in the walk? Clara maintains control of the elite Mero, Me Mero de Doros. While too small number to pose a threat in civil war, they are numerous enough to prevent any coup attempts, and even launch raids against their complexes. We should, therefore, launch a preemptive raid against their leadership complex under the pretext of national security or a military parade. Now that inspires pride and loyalty amongst the populace like a good military parade, let's put one on and press the elders with its might. Encourage conscripts. Ooh. Our main body of support of the, is the Ejercito. Therefore, encouraging conscription under the Ejercito makes sense, especially if we alter our training programs, including to touch more indoctrination. Produce consumer goods. Oh, look at that. You actually get a city, too. Though three years of tactical expansion, expansion the Ejercito owns a large amount of military factories directly. If we divert some of these factories into production of civilian goods, the people would look upon us favorably. I don't want to do this one because I don't want to lose too much manpower. The Ejercito holds a parade this morning. The Ejercito leads a march through the streets of Chichen Itza, showing off the discipline and flashing gear to the adorning. Public, while we initially feared. 
Uh, this was a sort of armed putsch. It appears that Azure Sito was only attempting to rally the public to their side as a part of the power struggle between themselves and Clara, however. It all went down dangerously well with the people of Chichen, Chichen Inza. That's of no threat. That's right. Clara attempts to treat the Kalumpt. Getting control over the apparatus of power has never been a problem for Clara, but legitimacy has been. And her latest attempts at gaining the latter. Um, Clara has been rather loudly declared that she has directed a multitude of researchers into the Empire to try and find a cure for the Kalumpt's injury and illness. This has obviously gone down well with the elders, who vastly prefer the Kalumpt over either, them, either of them. It will go down even better if she succeeds. We could theoretically meddle with the research to ensure that there is no improvement made, but we run this risk of dis discovery. Got to wait and see. This is this is a god awful grind. They're almost dead. They're so close to dying. It's not funny. Oh, it recovers. Uh. The entire ruling class of Chichen Itza woke to the shock this morning. There was a clunk dressed in his formal robes and sitting atop his throne. As if the whole, whole ordeal had never happened. The news spread like wildfire out of the court, and then the city for the Columbus had recovered from this seemingly fatal injury. While miraculous is now reality, and the Columbus does not seem best pleased with either Clara or Carlos after learning how keen they were to replace him. The Columbus cheats death once more, the impossible possible. The greatest miracle of the modern age has occurred. The Columbus is healed. At this rate, he'll be able to resume his control of the country within weeks, and his command of the field not long after. Oh, joy, stay. While news of the Columbus' recovery put an, ineffect an effective end to the power struggle, he has yet to return properly to the throne and once again take the command of the matters of the nation. Yeah. Um. Oh, more stability. Solidify succession. Well, politi reshuffle the political landscape. Are you kidding me? The old political situation uh, has grown stagnant. We have just seen a short while ago. Prone to power struggle. A drastic shakeup was needed. Are you freaking. This is ridiculous. These guys. Be Hello. This is needs. They need. These guys need a little bit of a nerf. Or we need to be able to edit our divisions. Okay, that's on hands. That is such bull. You know what? Because of that, I'm just going to straight up annex him. We lost this because of bull crap. Of complete and utter BS. So I'm just going to annex him. Because we deserve to. We honestly completely deserve to. Well, yep, I don't think we'd actually survive, but I guess here we're at. I really didn't think he'd survive. But we lost that again. God dang it. I'd rather have a good division. When the heck can we actually edit our divisions? I want this garbage. You're supposed to only pop them. Well, that's too bad. They chose their pain. Run or move. Still get another civvy. Not bad. Solidify succession. The reason for the last power struggle is that there's no through clear successor to the Columpton. This should be rectified. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Of course, in the cult of personality. The Columpton has always had a, an avid cult of personality, thanks to his victories abroad and forms at home. Wishing for this cult of personality, ensuring all the people realize how great a leader he is. Nice. Oh. It's an revanchism, huh? Oh, so this one. Industrial modernization. We can't go with this one this time. Total mobilization would be kind of nice. Expand the status quo. And then. Drastic military restructuring. Changing roles around. Shake the status quo. Scavenging efforts, nice. Well. This is where we're at now. Weird. But okay then. We're doing better again.
do with the Tehun. Throughout the power struggle, the Tehun had been nothing but a nuisance. Her delicate plotting seems to be without end. Even now, as a result, she must be dealt with. Yeah, although the Eshito too. Construction teams, development power stations. Resources are nice. Oh, every own state gets one infrastructure. That'd be nice. Promote large families. Tariff imports. It's not bad. Dominate the Caribbean trade. Oh, the Columbus Academy is pretty nice. Awake and angry. Well, I don't know if we can even do that one now. Staff's Royal Guard. The club's injuries <clears throat> was grave, and due to a rogue agitator in the northern borderlands slipping past the club's bodyguard. We should expand and formalize the bodyguard and should it ever happen again. Resume military duties. The time has come, the club is finally willing to rejoin its troops. They certainly missed his military prowess. Yeah, might as well. Good. We got this. Nice. Even more defense would be nice. There we go. And battle for Hoover Dam. And we'll deal with Ejercito. Ejercito is a troublesome group. Their elite land troops relied on heavily for the defense of her borderlands, but are also fiercely loyal to the leadership, with Carlos at the top. But they must be made subservient to us again, one way or the other. Anniversary of the American Operation. Today marks a grim day in American, Mex oh, Mexican history, beginning of the American Occupation, even after two centuries. The people of Mexico still remember when American force entered Mexico for the first time. The occupation had led to the annexation and colonization of North Mexico into a pro American pop of Mexico. The creation of Petro Chico, an arm of the Poseidon Energy, and the creation of the Rio Grande, whose American soldiers helped Mexican citizens after the bombs dropped. Despite the centuries that passed, the people of Mexico saw the fire resistance in their hearts. The people will continue to fight. Must shape our military reforms. Choose carefully. There are seemingly obvious choice. Here may not result in the reforms we would like. The rest of the Tejon. Everyone knew it was coming, with Colum Sebastian II in charge. Colaro's day as a free Itzum was numbered. To her credit, at least, Colaro chose to remain in a dwelling, not to flee the capital, despite this being exactly what many of her close allies did. However, when the men finally came to arrest her, Colaro peacefully submitted, fought until, until overwhelmed. Mero de Doros is Marines. Well, way more attack and defense. But scrap them. The schemer's longevity. <coughs> the schemer's been under house arrest for some time, but no decision was made about her longevity. It can certainly be said she's a master bureaucrat, but she's also proved that she'd be a master schemer. Get from the above. Nice. We're ready this time. Purge ambitious officers. You lose organization and uh, compare to consumer goods. Reduce effectiveness to the border patrol. Death of glory, the generals of the Azure Seat have been nothing but trouble. However, if we purge them, we leave a gaping hole in our command structure, but if we don't, we risk a coup. Do we not have enough civvies? Or, oh, we don't have more than enough money. Or dried cow cacao beans per month. We love the beans. That means stimulus. Huh? Are we attacking them? We double attacking them? Not really, we can really edit our divisions here. Death or glory? Scrap them? Marines. I kind of want to do Marines. I like the special attack and defense. That's insane. Is 
The fate of Clara Guzman. Following her capture by the loyalist troops, Clara spent her days locked up in the dungeon awaiting news of her fate. Two logical options present themselves either. We should execute Clara and purge bureaucracy, Clara's power base, or we should keep both Clara and the bureaucrats alive under strict supervision. A purge of hers in the short term, and the people are banging for blood, but is keeping our country working worth more than these troubled times? She needs to go. Bureaucrats keep us going? She needs to go. Bye bye. She's gone. Oh, they already owned it, so. Can we just go to war? I'd rather just go to war. Uh, I want to admit. Mero de Doros as Marines. Uh, Mero de Doros had, before the power struggle, been become more and more active than the amphitheaters. However, Lord of Clara and the struggle has meant that they can no longer be trusted to defend their country. They must be consolidated and restricted to dealing with their naval affairs. Um, this looks good for that. That's a crap ton of output. Purge ambitious officers. You know, we're going to scrap both. We'll do both if we're going to do that type, but we're going to reduce them. The Ercito have repeatedly shown profuse disloyalty, and we still must take a severe stance towards them. The Ercito should be stripped of the power to the entirety, and are like to the state of exile in the Borderlands. That's a fun game, Borderland. Fair to the generals. The great generals of uh, other cities, led by Halak Unik Carlos Franco, have been locked up in the dungeons since the resolution of the power struggle. We should now work out their future. Three possible theories exist, or have been floated. Either executing them all in a show of force, executing just a Halak Unik, or leaving them all to our leader armies that are in close supervision. People pay for blood, but does the military take priority? I'd have been suck. Now we'll do that one. Yeah, it's in revanchism. Amidst all the internal conflict and military and our leadership, we have something lost in our presence in the world at large. The base of the continent is fleeting and scarce, and we're surrounded on all sides by rivals who seek to bully and subjugate. If we're to prevail. Uh, <clears throat> and we claim that which is our right, we must prepare both the government and the people for all vicious, all out war. Our dent is in the Caribbean. Oh. The mercenaries. Share the Caribbean with us are the Guerreros de Honduras, a military nation whose border with us at land by sea. Given their position to the south of our nation, it can be said that we are their key to Mexico and North America. With these warlike types, the possibility of expansionism is high. We must assure peace between our nations if we are to wish to be secure. Well, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow to see what else we can do with the chitchen itself. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.